Hi, and welcome back to my channel. My name is James. I'm a critical care paramedic, and today we're going to go through cardioversion. We're going to go through the indications, how it works, the process, and like always, different places, different trusts, um, different services will have different protocols with you know specific jewels. So I'm not necessarily going to be focusing on those you know specific numbers right now. So what is cardioversion? So when someone's heart is beating way too fast, we can shock it to slow it down. Pretty. Pretty straightforward. So what do we need? The only thing you really need to cardiovert someone is pads, right? So obviously some consent is needed and our pads or paddles, if that's what you have, go on. So the first question we need to ask ourselves before we do this and, be, and before we shock anyone is, are they unstable, right? So how do we know if someone is unstable? So are they showing signs of shock? Do they have a decreased level of consciousness? Do they have chest pain? Do they have shortness of breath? Are they hypotensive? Um, all of these signs of shock, right? Um, most councils like um, the AHA or the um, UK Resource Council governments have specific criteria for what you know, shock or like not shock or stable or unstable is. But pretty much we're looking for someone who is in shock, hypotensive, decreased level of consciousness, chest pain. So. We've got our consent, patient is unconscious, we've taken their blood pressure, they're hypertensive, right? So we're going to put our monitor on. So you do not actually need your leads on, but you do need paddles. So we have our rhythm here, here is a VT. Great, patients in VT, I feel their carotid pulse, they have a very rapid carotid pulse, and they are in a fast, wide rhythm, right? So a VT. So how do we do this? So the important bit about cardioversion is that yes, it's going to hurt, um, I spoke to a patient who I cardioverted, and he was just saying that it's painful, but by the time the pain has come, the pain has gone, and he's just grateful that he no longer has, you know, that shortness of breath, chest pain, and decreased level of consciousness, right? What is the steps in doing this? So we can give him something for pain, right? If we're going to give him something like midazolam, but that can drop blood pressure, so we don't delay treatment or pain management or sedation if the patient is crashing, right? So what do we do? So the important and the most important thing is that we need to hit sync. The sync button is us telling the machine, you tell us when it is safe to shock, right? Because we don't want to shock him on a T wave or anything like that. This thing puts little dots next to each of the um, QRS and so it then knows when it is safe to shock. And so then we then need to charge, but we need to select our energy. So typically speaking, most kind of protocols are going to land you up starting at about 100 joules, right, for ventricle rhythms. If you're going for the atrial rhythms, it's actually a higher dose, but another story for another time. So we've selected our dose, we have hit sync, and you see it's flashing here, and we have little dots next to the screen. So we've prepped the patient if we're needing to do anything. There's nothing else we really need to do. Pads are on, we're going to now charge. The important bit here, and I hope you can hear me through all the beeping and noising, is that we need to hold the button down. If I push, you see I'm pushing, and it's not actually defibbing, or it's not actually... Oh, there we go. So you see what happened there is that I push the button, and I push the button, and I push the button, and it's not shocking, and some people can panic quite a bit. But what actually, actually needs to happen is that we are saying it's safe to shock, the patient's clear, I'm clear, we then need to hold down the shock button. And then when the monitor feels that it is safe to shock, it will shock. So it is deciding when to shock. We're deciding when it's safe to actually allow the machine to shock. So you see how I pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed, and then elated it then give. So that is a really important point, right? So now we want to reassess. Is the patient still in this rhythm? Do we need to then up our dosage, right? The other important point to note is that it drops out of sync every time, right? Because if the patient goes into VF or some other rhythm that we need to shock, it may not be able to sync with VF, and so therefore it drops sync. Some monitors won't drop sync, some monitors do drop sync. It will depend on the monitor. So we need to hit resync. We need to hit, we need to increase our joules. You can go from 100 to, to like 150 or 100 to 200. Like I said, it depends on the protocol that you are or where you are, the trust you are, the system you're working in. We'll have different dosages that we're going to increase by, but in the big scheme of things, we need to increase the joules. We need to make sure we're on sync and we need to shock again. So let's jump to 150. We're gonna charge again and we're gonna shock. Remember is hold down. Shock, right. 
So it's important to realize that if you've shocked and, you've, and you have increased your joules and you've shocked again and you've increased your joules and you've shocked again and you've increased your joules, doing the same thing over and over is not going to lead to a different result, right? So we need to be trying to work out, does the patient have a problem that is causing the tachycardia or does he have a tachycardia that is causing the problem, right? So only if it is a rate-related problem, so it's because he's running this VT that he is hypotensive, or is it that there's something that's caused him to become hypotensive and tachycardic? We need to try and work out which is the cause, because if it's the tachy causing the problem, then we can fix the tachy. But if there's something else causing the tachy, so let's say someone is you know, dehydrated and they're just running a super fast, super fast like SVT or something that looks like an SVT and we're shocking something because of dehydration, you can imagine how that's not the treatment for dehydration. So just be careful of not shocking a tachy that's been caused by something else rather than the tachy that is causing the problem. So yeah, that is cardioversion. If you enjoyed that, please hit like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, or maybe if you do it differently in your service, I'd love to know your thoughts and comments. Um, and if you like this video, you'll probably like this one too. So see you there. Bye for now.